This episode of Monster Model Review, we have one of my favorite Ultra Q monsters, Pagila, and a gallery of Billiken monsters by a group of awesome artists. Ultra Q was the first series in the Ultra Universe. These shows were produced by Subaraya Productions in 1966 by Tokyo Broadcasting System. Ultra Q was a lot like American 1960s sci-fi television, but with giant monsters and sometimes not so giant monsters. You might remember some of these monsters from our previous episode of Ultra Villains on episode 186 of Monster Model Review with some of the smaller plastic Bondi kit releases. Ultra Q, along with Ultraman, Ultra 7, Return of Ultraman, and Ultraman Ace have all recently been released by Mill Creek Entertainment, and I can't recommend these Blu-ray sets enough if you love giant monsters as much as I do. Now, back to the kit. The Billiken Ultra Zone Pagila is an all-vinyl model kit and was produced in the late 80s. It comes in 19 pieces and stands about 11 and a half inches tall. As with all vinyl kits I built, I toss the pieces in the sink full of hot soapy water and using a sharp X-Acto knife, carefully cut according to the instructions. I glued the kit together except for the top of the head with super glue gel. I seamed up the connection of the neck and the wings with AV's Apoxy Sculpt, my absolute favorite seam filler, and let the pieces dry. I decided to paint the kit without using a primer due to sometimes vinyl and enamel don't mix well and stays tacky for years. Using inexpensive acrylic hobby paints, I started by painting the insides of the mouth dark red and different shades of flesh, and finished by hitting it with a super high gloss before gluing the top of the head back on. This made it much easier to get around the teeth. Once that was done and the head was glued together, I did an overall base coat of light olive green, painted the horns, tusks, and claws in off-white, and added spots in dirty yellow on Pagila's midsection. I dry brushed a couple lighter shades on the whole kit and ended with the detail of the eyes and the whiskers. Using a trick I learned painting miniatures, I applied a dark walnut stain by Midwax thinned with mineral spirits on the figure and using a rag and cotton swabs to wipe the excess area and lighten the raised area, much like antiquing. This has become my favorite way to age figures and sculptures lately. I let the kit dry for three or more days depending on the weather and humidity and hit it with Pester's Dull Coat. I finish up by painting high gloss on the eyes and redid the mouth, and that's it. I love these big figures. They are easy to build, seam, and paint. I would love to get more in my collection, but until then, please enjoy this gallery of more Billiken Kaiju built and painted by a fine group of monster artists.
I'd like to thank Ben, Reiner, Bill, John, Paul, Stan, and Steve for sharing their awesome works. From classic monsters to obscure kaiju, Billiken has had a super diverse group of kits and toys for years. Please take some time to subscribe and like us on Facebook. You can also find an episode guide, how-tos, artist profile, show videos, and a whole lot more on MonsterModelReview.com. I've been your host, Rob Madison, and thanks for watching. <laughs>